the patients who came to consult Jung at his house in Kusnacht varied widely, from American heiresses and the German writer Hermann Hesse to the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. Dr. Jeffrey Satinover. Basically, the motive for starting Alcoholics Anonymous came out of a patient of Jung's experience. And Jung's communicating to that patient the idea that essentially he was not going to ever successfully get over his alcoholism if he did not find God. The official history of Alcoholics Anonymous traces the group's origins to Jung's diagnosis of the incurable alcoholic known only as Roland H. His craving for alcohol was the equivalent on a low level of the spiritual thirst of our being for wholeness, expressed in medieval language, the union with God. What people seek in addictive experience is something which in and of itself is normal. That, that is to say, the craving is normal. The craving for certain kinds of elation, for a certain sense of specialness, for heroism, for cessation of pain, and underlying all of those really, ultimately and, and most powerful, is the uh, seeking of a sense of meaningfulness. Dr. Jeffrey Satinover has established a clinic specializing in senility and Alzheimer's disease and addiction to drugs and alcohol. You've seen some of the early signs of it already. The therapy goes beyond the alcoholic or senile patient to include other family members. What we hope an individual will gain from the psychotherapeutic dimension of substance abuse treatment is a way of finding meaning in their lives again. Because, as Jung correctly recognized, ultimately the, the key motivating factor in the beginning of an addiction is the seeking of spirit. When Roland H. first arrived in his consulting room, Jung told him that unless he could find a way to a religious or spiritual experience, his addiction was incurable. You see, alcohol in Latin is spiritus. And you use the same word for the highest religious experience as well as for the most depraving poison. The helpful formula, therefore, is spiritus contra spiritum. Dionysus uh, was not the god of drunkenness. He was the god of ecstatic vision. He was a god of wine, but that was the wine of religion, not the wine of drunkenness. For Robert Johnson, the Greek god Dionysus offers an insight into the modern epidemic of alcoholism. Johnson draws on mythology for fables of psychological reality. His latest book considers the gods of antiquity and our universal need for emotional highs or ecstasy. It is basic and if we don't get our ecstasy, which is an archetypal quality, in a legitimate way, we will get it in an illegitimate way which accounts for much of the chaos of this culture now. We have to have an ecstatic dimension of our life. In all ancient cultures, the heights of the mountains and the heavens have been identified as the place of the gods. Moses received the Ten Commandments from his god on the mountaintop. The Greek gods dwelt on Mount Olympus. The Pueblo Indians live close to their father's son on the 6,000-foot-high plateau of New Mexico. The metaphor of height applied to a mental state is, is universal. And when an individual seeks the experience of getting high, the implication is that they chronically, or as a matter of course, do not feel high. But the modern age has conquered all the heights and even invaded the heavens. Jung was dismayed. The gods have become diseases. Zeus no longer rules Olympus, but rather the solar plexus, and produces curious specimens for the doctor's consulting room, or disorders the brains of politicians and journalists, who unwittingly let loose psychic epidemics on the world. That's a quote from Dr. Jung. He said, when we dismantled Olympus, we turn the gods into symptoms. If there's not, this is only a restatement of a moment ago, if we don't get a particular archetypal quality legitimately, it will, so to speak, pop up somewhere in its symptomatic, that is, its compulsive form.